Hi, my name is Judd Gravel, and I'd like to take the next couple of minutes to introduce you to the Power Platform Connector for Azure DevOps. The uh, Power Platform Connector for Azure DevOps is a fantastic way to integrate what you might be doing in Dataverse or Power Platform or Dynamics with what you're doing in Azure DevOps services. And we'll talk a little bit about what that looks like today and give you a couple of examples um, integrating in sort of in both directions between uh, Azure DevOps and Power Platform and uh, show you ways that you might be able to use this um, on your own. So because this is a business applications channel, I'll assume that most folks are familiar with things like Dataverse and Power Apps and Power Automate and even potentially Dynamics, which is essentially a, a Microsoft built Power App. Um, so I won't spend a lot of time uh, going into detail or on background of, of Power Apps before we jump right into the demo. What might be new to some of the folks on the call um, is Azure DevOps and the way we think of Power Platform as a toolbox for building business applications. I can kind of think of Azure DevOps as a toolbox for your developers so that they can better deploy and manage and ship um, and uh, develop applications. And if you look down, on, if you go to the main Azure DevOps page, you can sort of look at all the services that come with uh, Azure DevOps, everything from repositories to, to hold your code from pipelines to help you uh, help you build your applications to things like schedule boards, which we'll look at today in a little bit more detail um, to help you track various milestones and issues and tasks in your projects in Azure DevOps. So we're going to look at how we can integrate again what's going on in Azure DevOps here with um, what's happening in Dataverse. And the way we do that is via the Azure DevOps connector for Power Automate. So I've just opened the main documentation page uh, for the Azure DevOps connector. This is all public, of course, just to give you a quick overview before we jump in of, of some of the things you're not going to see, some of the things that Power Automate can do. And I've just clicked on the actions link there and this shows you sort of all of the things that you can you know think about when you're integrating power automate with um, or, or power platform with azure devops creating new releases new work items new plans you know querying your, your databases um you're querying your your work items your boards um there's there's even a, a link just to send any sort of http request to azure devops so if you don't see a built-in command we'll we'll take a look in the second demo how you can just send a, an http request to the to the api um, but tons of uh, actions in in uh, the connector and if we jump back to the the top into the triggers section you'll see that there are also trigger triggers so you can um, create flows that will kick off when something ha happens over in devops and use that to upgrade to update um power platform or for that matter any other system um so to to demonstrate this we're just going to take a look at a couple of the actions in the the connector and a couple of the, the triggers in, in the connector and see how you might might use those uh to integrate back and forth to do that i have a very simple uh scheduling board here in azure devops um, again, this is a, a schedule board where you can track things like issues and tasks that are, are related to deploying an application. And we're going to talk about how to integrate this information with what's in project service automation in just a second. Um, I do want to point out that before you um, before you get kicked off with this integration, you're going to want to make sure that you have one setting um, set that's not terribly well documented. So if we click under organization settings and we click under security policies, you're going to want to make sure that you have third party application access via OAuth turned to on. This is the only way that you're going to be able to communicate between um, your, your Power Automate instance and your Azure DevOps instance. But once you've got that on, you've got just about all the setup taken care of. There's not really anything special you have to do as long as you have a user account for this Azure DevOps instance and as long as you have or organization, as long as you have this uh, item checked in that organization, you should now be able to access Azure DevOps from Power Automate. Now for the demonstration, I've just created a simple demo project that has a couple of, of work items in it and we'll use these to demonstrate the, the integration back and forth. Now we want to show that integrating with Power Platform. So 
I've actually got a an instance, a demo instance of project service automation stood up here. There's a couple of different projects, only two that we're tracking um, in this dynamic instance, and we're going to show how you know what we're doing over here in, in uh, PSA can affect what's happening in Azure DevOps and 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 vice versa. Okay, so the first flow we'd like to or I'd like to show to demonstrate this integration is one called update project from work item, and it's a very simple flow when a, a there's a work item out there for an NVCC research project and when someone updates the description on that work item we're going to want that description to get piped over into uh, dynamics and to update the description on a project with the same name over there so there's a work item and a project with the same name and we're going to want to kind of synchronize the changes from the work item over to the project so if i click edit on this guy um, you'll see it's again a very very simple flow. It has a trigger at the top um, set to monitor Azure DevOps and to trigger any time any work item is updated. You could filter this to do it more um, more intelligently, but I've got this running now every time any work item is updated. From there, I'm going to use a condition to check to see if it is in fact that NBCC um research project and if in fact it is i'm then going to run these steps down here the, the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to remove any formatting from the description from azure devops um, and then i'm going to use that description from azure devops to look up that particular nbcc project and then update the description back in um back in the project in psa so again we're monitoring for changes to work items we're determining whether that change happens to the one work item that we're interested in and then if it was a change to that work item we're going and we're updating PSA now just to give you a, a quick demonstration of how that happens again here's my NBCC um, research project and I'm going to click on that guy and show you the description which is just NBCC research project description um, I'm going to go ahead and change that to description for video and then I'm going to click save and if we go back to our projects in PSA and we click in on NBCC Research Project, um, you will see our description right now is NBCC Research Project description, but you know, in a matter of seconds, Power Automate um, has already triggered and it's taken that information from Azure DevOps and it should have updated that by the time we click, uh, by the time we click refresh here. And you can see here in the description now, our description matches um, what we changed up there in, 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 uh, in our work items. So that's, again, just a simple example of a flow that is, you know, looking at what's going on in Azure DevOps, waiting for a change there, and then using the data from that change to update another system. In this case, it's PSA, and it's probably worth mentioning, you know, this doesn't have to go and update PSA. This could go update SharePoint or Outlook or, Send, the, yeah, send an email or a Teams notification, whatever uh, whatever you need it to do. In this case, again, we're just using it to, to update Dataverse. So the second example I wanted to show you is a slightly more complex example, um, but it's one that uh, you'll be able to use to do some more interesting things because there are only so many actions in, uh, in the connector out of the box, but you can use one of these actions to do just about anything with the Azure DevOps API. So we'll take a look at that. And if I click edit, well, we'll just back up. So this flow here is designed to create a new project in Azure DevOps every time a project is created in um, project service automation. So every time I add a new project to Dataverse, this should trigger and then create a brand new project in Azure DevOps. So if we, we click on this to see how that works, You'll see if you get a very simple uh, a simple flow. A lot, there's a lot in the second one, but we're basically adding or we're basically tr monitoring Dataverse and we're monitoring the projects table where project service automation projects are stored. And anytime a new one is added, we're taking these steps down here, which is to send an HTTP request to Azure DevOps. And this is where you can start to get um, you can you really use anything in the API, and I, I haven't tested anything or all of the all of the API calls, but you can use it, apparently anything in the API to uh, um, 
integrate between Azure DevOps and, and Power Automate. And in this case, we're actually using the, the, the REST API to create a brand new project on the fly and we're passing the name of the project in the description of the project from Dataverse. So if I create a project in, as I create a project in PSA, a few seconds later, we should have a brand new project in, in Azure DevOps. So this is sort of integration in the other direction, monitoring Dataverse and then performing an operation over in, in Azure DevOps. And to demonstrate that, I can go back to project, go back to my list of projects and then create a new one. And I'll just call this my uh, my project for the video. Oops, that's a template. I want to call this my project for the video. And I'll give it a description of video description. And I'll click save here. So as before, Dataverse will now be, uh, excuse me, Power Automate will now be monitoring Dataverse. And as that project gets added to um, the data, uh, the project's table, that will then send out a, a request to the REST API, which will create a new project with the name and description that just came from the project that I created. So if I go back to my Azure DevOps instance and go to my Azure DevOps organization, oops, Azure DevOps organization, you'll actually see down here instead of, um, or you'll see an additional project, a blank project now that has the same information that I just typed in and matches my project for video, video, video description, my project for video, video description. So you can go again back and forth uh, between Azure DevOps to, or from Azure DevOps to PSA or Dynamics or Power Platform and the, uh, and the other direction with these two um, with these two examples. So just again, a couple of simple examples to show you how to get started using the Power Automate connector with, with Azure DevOps and with Power Platform. Do go out uh, and, and check out the documentation for a full description of all of the triggers and all of the actions. Um, remember that you have that REST API action that you can use for, for things that you don't see listed in the out of the box triggers. And uh, again, it's a, a fantastic capability, and I think it'll help our customers um, with uh, DevOps and make them more efficient. Thank you very much.